it's a bad memory day and we're gonna talk about it because that's what I do I talk about things unlike my family who wants me to be silent I know that sometimes talking about things is what you need to do in order to get past them there's a lot of things that I'm not just going to be able to magically overcome this I think is going to be one of them the topic of the day is hair mine looks awful right now don't it this looks like a bad comb over it's because I um, went to sleep with it wet and it doesn't know what to do now my grandmother did my hair for me until I was in my late twenties I don't mean just that she brushed it I mean that she would come into the bathroom while I was bathing to do my hair because she fully believed I could not do it myself and this was an occurrence until I was an adult until after I was married until after the murder and if anybody questioned her she would get very defensive and then very upset and start to cry and say she can't do it herself she needs help she can't do that herself she has to have help with her hair because my aunt Martha asked her when I was about 17 they were all at the hotel and Mimo went in to do my hair she asked her do you think the girl really needs help and she said yes yes she does it wasn't a situation where I had any control Mima was in control of my hair. So I told y'all that I spent decades with head lice. And that's not a lie. All through school, I had head lice. And while I had these little bugs living off of my blood, my grandmother was more interested in making sure my hair looked pretty. So every couple of months she would take me to the salon and have it permed and have all these curls chemically put in. And then we couldn't do anything about the head lice because you couldn't comb out the perm. And the perm was more important. And we just went on with our life, both of us knowing that I was sick all the time from these bugs draining my blood. She would put kerosene on my hair to kill them so that she wouldn't have to comb them out because you can't comb out a perm. But then the kerosene would get down in my eyes and I would rub my eyes to get it out, but of course that would just rub it further in. My sisters like to believe that my life at my grandmother's was perfection. It was all happiness while they were dealing with our parents screaming drug addicted and their friends coming in every night and the parties and the police. I was living in the lap of luxury, having my hair done every six months, having pictures taken, being taken to theme parks and meeting family that they never knew. But that perfection came at a high cost because my grandmother was extremely controlling and she really didn't care too much about my health as long as I looked good. <coughs> she didn't care much about her health as long as she looked good. The night she broke her hip, she wouldn't let me call the police for her, the ambulance, until she decided. She wanted to get dressed first, put on makeup, she didn't want anybody to see her in her nightgown. That was just the way she was. And I tried to be respectful of that. Just like I always tried to be respectful of her, but she was extremely controlling. I don't know how to live 
now that she is gone and not here to tell me how to live. She told me how to do everything. She did my hair for me until I was 24 years old. I used to have nightmares that she was going to put me in her dollhouse one day, that she was going to do my hair up pretty and get me looking real pretty and then just stand me in the dollhouse and tell me to stay there. Just like all of her other dolls. Because that's what I felt like for a long time. I felt like I was just one of her dolls. To be cleaned up and paraded around and then taken back to my parents. And she didn't care what was happening in my parents any more than she cared what was happening up in my hair. It didn't matter, as long as it all looked good on the outside. I looked good on the outside. That's why it's so hard for people to believe the truth now.